adding a chlorine onto your alkenes. This is a very important reaction for synthesis and predicting the problem portion of your exam. So make sure you pay very close attention to what you need to do. Okay, so chlorination is different than bromination because bromination is much, much more selective than chlorination. That's why um, whenever you have a molecule, you have to evaluate every single position on that molecule for chlorine to be on there. So you'll get multiple products. But if it's bromination, bromination would be selective. It would be only added to a tertiary or more stable position in the molecule. Okay, so that said, let's do a problem, actually a bunch of problems, for monochlorination. The first one, you all have the handout. You had to answer three questions for each, um, each molecule. So the first one that we're doing is this one. Okay, so the first thing that I do whenever I do chlorination problems, I label each hydrogen. So this is a hydrogen. Okay, so these are my hydrogens, A through G. Then I'm going to draw all of them and then cancel out the ones that are closer together. Actually, let's do that before. So after you label them, um, try to find out, try to recognize the symmetry of the molecule. So if you see it, the symmetry is right in the middle. That means A is same as F, B is same as E, C is same as G, because there is an exact symmetry in the middle. So the hydrogens on A would be similar to F. They behave similarly, so there will only be one product. One other thing, there is other symmetries here right in the middle. So no matter when you start naming the molecule, no matter where you start from A or C, it's going to get the same number of, it's always going to be one or always going to be fifth, which are side you pick from. So A and C is also same as F and G. So all of these can be canceled and you only write one of them, which is going to be A which is equivalent of saying C, F, and G. And same thing happens with B. Actually, we're going to keep one. So we're going to keep the B, but B and E are exactly the same. So we're going to not draw this product. OK, so the only three different ones <laughs> are these. So let's try to do that. So the product for first one, all you're doing is replacing the hydrogen with chlorine. So we did this. That. Okay, don't forget the other methyl that's still there. And this. So these are the three distinct products that we get. And after you're done doing that, go back to the question the three questions that is listed there. So how many products without any stereoisomer? For this, so how many product without any stereoisomer? For to answer that question, we did all this work. So this is one, two, and three. So answer for number one is three. Okay. Then you have to decide how many products, including the stereoisomer. So in that case, you had to go back to your molecules and see which ones are chiral. Okay, so how many carbons are chiral here? Is this chiral? 
Yep, this is going to be chiral. Then you have this is not chiral, nothing's chiral here, nothing's chiral there. So this is going to be R and S. So there are two for the first one, three and four. So products including stereoisomer is going to be four for this one. And the last question is how many chiral products we have? So that's just focusing on chiral products. We have two of those. One's going to be R, one's going to be S. So the answer for number three is two. So if you, if you realize, the only hard part is get to the first question. After that, it's just a follow-up question that you have already learned in past exams. So make sure. I'm going to repeat the process again. First, label all the hydrogen. Cross off the similar hydrogens by looking at the symmetry. And then draw the products. And then do the rest of the questions. OK, uh, we're going to do another problem like that. Let's do number two. So in the problem, make sure you look for symmetry or stereochemistry. Those are the two things that you have to be careful about. That's where you can make mistake. All right, so let's do number two, which is this. OK, so now we get to label these hydrogen. I'm going to call this A. That is B. That's C. Now I'm going to stop because I know there is a symmetry to it. So if you break this right in the middle, you will see that these carbons, let me use as the other color, these two carbons and those two carbons are going to be exactly the same because there is a symmetry right in the middle. So I'm not going to label them separately. I'm just going to call them one thing. This is going to be D. So that's D as well. And that's going to be E. So that's E. So we're going to have five distinct products. So your answer for the first one is going to be five. Let's draw this, those five. OK. Simply what you're doing is replacing the hydrogen with chlorine. Make sure you don't miss a carbon by that. That's why I have these hydrogens drawn, so you don't miss a carbon by mistake. All right, these are the five distinct products without any stereoisomers that we have. Now we had to count how many stereoisomers, how many of them have stereoisomers, so how many of them are chiral. All right, so this carbon, nothing chiral here because there is no symmetry there. So this is the only one. Then we have B. Um, the Cl is part of the other molecule, so the molecule ends there. OK, so C, this is going to be chiral. So we're going to have R and S for that. This one, we're not going to have any chiral molecule, so this is the only one. So, so far we have one, two, three, four. OK, let's get to here. OK, now. Now, this becomes chiral because there is a chlorine there, so there is no more exact symmetry there. So this is chiral, and so is this one because you will see a point of difference at one point. 
Okay, so for that, we're going to have 2 to the 2, which is 4 different ones. And same thing happens here. This is going to be chiral. That's going to be chiral. 2 to the 2 is 4. So we already had 4 here, and then we have 8 more. So that's going to be 12. So number 2 is 12. And the last question is, how many chiral products are there? So just count them. 2 and then 8. So we're going to have 10 total chiral products in our structure. All right, so this was a little difficult because he had to understand the stereochemistry of each of them. So that's another one. And let's do the last problem. When a molecule already has a stereochemistry, the problem becomes a little more difficult. So that's what we're going to do next. OK, this is your starting material. Now, do the exact same thing. There is a symmetry right in the middle, if you can all see. So we're going to have A, that's A, B, that's B, C, that's also C, and D is on its own. So we're going to have four distinct products. That's the answer for number one. Let's draw all four. Make sure you don't forget what was already on there. Now, when the Cl comes in, this carbon goes flat. So we're just going to draw it that way because we need to realize what uh, stereochemistry is going to come in. So. Just leave it as it is. Make it flat. OK. And The last one is right there. OK, so these are the four distinct products that we have. Now let's look up how many stereochemistry, um, how many pro chirality, chiral carbons we have. So obviously, one other thing in this one. Since you already start with the stereochemistry, Sometimes you have other stereocenters to it. So maybe adding a chlorine on A will not give me the same um, stereocenter as adding a carbon on this side of A. So we're going to have to count two for both sides of symmetry in this case because it's already chiral. So this one has two. Then this one's going to have 4 because this will be chiral, and then this side of B gets the chlorine, then that's going to be chiral as well. So we're going to have 4 of these, and then 4, that's 4, and then this one is also going to have 4 because this is chiral, so that's RNS. But if chlorine goes to the other side of C, that's going to be a different RS. So that's 4. And this is actually symmetry right in the middle. So that is the only one that we have. So we only have one over there. OK. And um, so let's just count them all. We have 2, 4, 4, 1. So that's 
11. So answer for 2 is 11. And then how many of them are chiral? Now, of course, this is chiral, that's chiral, that's chiral, so that's 10. This, there is a middle symmetry right there, so this is actually meso, and meso products are achiral, so we're going to have one less in our chiral product list, and that's going to be 10. So um, this was a little complicated. Make sure you view both sides of symmetry when there is a, a stereochemistry to begin with. And that's why this problem is a little difficult. But the more practice you do, the better you get at it. Um, there are a bunch of problems in back of the book as well that you can work on. And he can sometimes, he gives you in class like a follow-up questions too. So I hope this helped. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.